Hi, I'm Michael Howe with Glueware. In this highlight video, we're going to take a look at how Glueware has been integrated with ServiceNow to benefit enterprise network operators. ServiceNow is a widely used IT service management or ITSM platform, providing a suite of applications and features that streamline and automate IT service delivery. Here are some of the ways ServiceNow is utilized as an ITSM platform and the value it brings to an enterprise network operator. Incident management. ServiceNow allows for the logging and tracking of incidents, ensuring that IT issues are documented and managed effectively. Incidents can be automatically routed to the appropriate IT personnel, speeding up resolution times. Incidents can be prioritized based on their impact and urgency, helping to address critical issues promptly. Problem management. ServiceNow provides tools for identifying the root causes of recurring issues helping to prevent further incidents. Platform facilitates the creation of problem records, allowing for structured resolution and documentation. Change management. IT teams can submit and track change requests through a standard process. Automated workflows ensure that changes are reviewed and approved by the necessary stakeholders before implementation. Service catalog. Users can access a catalog of IT services and request them through a, a user-friendly portal. Requests are logged, tracked, and fulfilled through an automated workflow, improving efficiency. ServiceNow is also used as a Configuration Management Database, or CMDB. ServiceNow maintains a comprehensive database of IT assets and their relationships, providing a clear view of IT infrastructure. Asset Tracking. The platform tracks the life cycle of IT assets from procurement to retirement. Glueware provides an industry-leading automation solution for large, complex enterprise network infrastructure, supporting multi-vendor and multi-domain, including the LAN or campus, data center, WAN, branch, and extending into the cloud. Provides a suite of automation applications that perform network discovery and device discovery with the ability to capture rich data set that includes the device details, configuration, and state that is user extensible. It provides config and state drift monitoring. It provides config and state auditing for compliance with company or industry standards. It has an app for OS management to automate upgrades, downgrades, patches with pre and post checks at scale. It has an application for configuration management using built-in intelligence it has a process automation with Network RPA, which we'll be discussing, and has a topology application for visualization and site documentation. Glueware is a data model-driven platform. This data model unifies multi-vendors by ingesting CLI and API configurations, inventory information, and operational state into a common data model. This enables Glueware to interact with the network infrastructure programmatically, treating it as code. The intelligent engine is able to read the current state and when making config changes, compare that current state to the intended state or policy and then render in real time the commands necessary to put each device into the desired state with verification. It's highly flexible for users to onboard any configuration or design from basic globals and tactical changes to complex designs like EVPN VXLAN. Glueware pre-builds and maintains vendor support, enabling integrations with the application suite. This is extensible and flexible to customize discovery, state captures, and verifications, as well as configuration management. Network RPA is an application that ties together the app suite, enabling end-to-end -end process automation through an easy drag-and-drop canvas that also supports third-party integrations, including Ansible and Stackstorm, and no-code API integrations. Gluer also offers service connectors, providing a pre-built set of tasks in Network RPA. In our demo, we'll highlight the ServiceNow Gluer service connector. So ServiceNow and Gluer together provide benefits to the enterprise network operators that include enhanced efficiency and productivity through automated workflows and standardized processes that reduce manual effort, allowing IT teams to focus on high-value tasks that also creates faster incident resolution and streamlined service that improve overall productivity. It improves service quality and user satisfaction 
with consistent and reliable IT service delivery that enhances the user experience and increases satisfaction. And the self-service capabilities empower users to resolve common issues independently reducing downtime. It provides proactive problem management. So identifying and addressing root causes of problems help prevent reoccurring incidents leading to a more stable IT environment. There's better change management, providing a structured change process and risk assessments that minimize the impact of changes on the network, ensuring continuity and stability. It provides comprehensive asset and configuration management. The centralized config management database provides visibility into the IT infrastructure, facilitating better decision-making and resource allocation. Effective asset management also optimizes the use of IT resources and reduce costs. Data-driven insight. ServiceNow provides robust reporting and analytics capabilities, along with Glueware, to enable network operators to gain insights into IT performance and identify areas to improve. Data-driven decision-making leads to more strategic planning and investment. Scalability and flexibility. Both of these products are used at some of the largest enterprises worldwide. And this scale is able to accommodate the growth and changing needs of the large enterprise. So let's take a look at the demonstration. In this demonstration, we're going to be using a pretty complicated use case that is a multi-vendor trust set security policy use case around auditing the current state of a network, then determining if it fails an audit of current determined state, then we'll initiate with ServiceNow and ultimately automate a remediated change. What we're going to focus on this demo in terms of a highlight around ServiceNow are the ServiceNow capabilities in the workflow that include a CMDB sync. So Glueware will be updating device parameters and that change will be synchronized to the ServiceNow CMDB. We'll also take this use case through a change approval process, opening up a change request, updating a change request, waiting for the change to be approved. Once it's approved, implementing it, and then doing a final update on it as well. So let's move on to the demonstration. So here we are in a Google Chrome web browser, and we're, we're gonna get signed into the Glueware web user interface. Signing in is gonna return me to the last application I was in in the app suite, which is my dashboard showing me the devices in this org. So just a couple notes in that Glue, this is, happens to be an on-prem system running on a private network. Glueware can be hosted as a virtual machine or run in the cloud. It is multi-user with role-based access control. So I'm signed in using my rights and permissions. And it is multi-tenant, what we call Glueware orgs, and I'm navigated into a particular demo lab that has multi-vendors you can see. And this demo will be automating Cisco switches, Cisco Meraki, which is an API interface, and Arista switches via API as well. So let's move right into Network RPA and get started. So I've navigated into Network RPA, and we're going to look at a workflow that's already been built and walk you through it based on the use case I described in the slide. So what you see here in Network RPA is the workflow editor. This is the drag and drop canvas that provides process automation. As you look at the Glueware applications from Device Manager, Drift and Audit, OS Manager, Config Modeling, and more, these applications are essentially deconstructed into tasks, giving me the ability to perform Device Manager tasks, Config Drift tasks, Audit tasks, Config Model Editor, which is our Config Management, Data Explorer, and more. So what I'm gonna be showing you or focusing in, in is the use case around the integration with ServiceNow. So just a couple quick notes here is we're setting workflow context. This enables variable management through the workflow as we maintain data captured from third parties like in this case ServiceNow. We will be looking at the devices, capturing configurations, and at this point, this particular task will be updating device parameters. So just for demonstration purposes, we're updating the description on devices and Glueware. This field happens to be defined as a field that Glueware is the source of truth for. So in the next task, the first ServiceNow integration task, we're going to be performing a ServiceNow CMDB sync. So 
what this is going to do is synchronize the ServiceNow instance with the data from the Glueware side so that Glueware is updating certain fields in ServiceNow and ServiceNow is updating certain fields in Glueware. Just to talk to that quickly here, let's look at the ServiceNow tasks available. So I can search all of my tasks and I can see I have two categories of ServiceNow tasks that are pre-built I can drag and drop in. One category is the CMDB sync. So this is literally a sync operation. Again, anything that has changed on either side will be pulled or pushed, depending on what you've determined to be the source of truth for each given field. And then we, we have the one we're gonna be diving in a bit further, which is the ServiceNow ITSM. So you see tasks around change requests, incidents, and problems that mostly involve or creation, update, and let's say request for approval. So these are, again, the pre-built service connector for ServiceNow that allows no code integration with your ServiceNow instance or platform. So moving on in the workflow, as mentioned, the first ServiceNow task that we're gonna hit is going to be updating the ServiceNow uh, that's going to update description. I'll show you a little bit more on that in a second. For context here, we're going to be running an audit, and that audit is going to be auditing the trust sec and network access control configuration. We've set it up so that that will fail. So we have an if condition that if the audit does fail, we're going to take this path here in the workflow. So here's the next in the series of ServiceNow tasks in this workflow. This is the first around ITSM task, and this is gonna open up a change request. The whole purpose of change requests is that everything is captured in the ServiceNow platform, it's documented, it's approved, things are noted, and you, know, you have management of your overall change operations. Even when a change is automated, you want that change, in this case, Glueware is making the change, but you want it recorded in ServiceNow. So we're gonna open up a change request, and we're gonna basically just put a note in saying that a NAC audit has failed and that it is assigning it to a specific group for approval. The next task is going to update that task. And we're basically updating parameters, including making the priority one or critical, making the risk level high because it is potential security vulnerability and that it is in a state of assess. So, at assess, the approval approvers have to go and look to assess the change and then ultimately approve it. So next we have maybe the most interesting task from a workflow standpoint, which is get change request. And get change request, if we look at the variables, is tracking change requests and it's a tracking the approval. And if I just expand this here, again, we're creating a variable that we're going to be checking in ServiceNow and we're gonna be looking at the approval value. We wrap that task in a wait for operator. This wait for operator is waiting for the approval field to equal approved. So basically we're gonna loop every one minute, we're gonna check service now until we get an approval. If we fail or bomb out, we could put actions in the timeout branch. But this gives Glueware the ability to keep checking back until we get that approval. We will stop after 30 minutes, but in our demo, I will go make that approval and let it continue. So once we get the change request approved, we're going to be implementing the change. And I'm not gonna dive deeply into this, just understand that we are going to be assigning policies to the iOS-based devices and the Arista EOS-based devices, and we're going to be provisioning them. So here we're going to provision, that's wrapped with a try catch, just in case there's any errors in provisioning. And then we're going to proceed on with updating ServiceNow to say that it's been implemented. So if we look at what's being updated, the state is changed to implemented. The change has been approved. Change has been implemented by Glueware. We're going to then continue the, the operation for the changes on the Meraki side, because those are API-based changes. Then we're going to run validation, making sure everything is good. And the final ServiceNow task here is a final update, changing the request to a state of review. So this is done. 
it's sitting in a review state to be closed and that the NAC configuration has been applied and validated through Glueware. And then essentially that's the end of the workflow and we can remove the, the data that was stored during the run of the workflow. So with that overall explanation, we're gonna kick off this workflow by executing it. Once the workflow is running, I'm gonna to go to activity and we're going to do the interactive tasks and also monitor the status of it as it's run. One of the first tasks that hits in the workflow is the selection of the targets. So I'm going to, that's an interactive task in this case. So I'm gonna select all of the targets and move those in and hit save. So that is now running. And while it's running, I'm gonna navigate over to service now and just show you that the network gear, that the descriptions are currently blank for the Cisco devices and Arista devices that are involved in this test. The other thing I'll quickly show you is that from a change request standpoint, we don't have any changes waiting to be approved. So we're going to see a new change open up. So let's go back to the Glueware side. And just for the interest of time in the video, I will speed up where we're waiting for things to complete to save some time. Okay, we're at the state where we've captured the configurations, we've updated the device details, and we've we performed that sync with ServiceNow. So just to see that, we'll navigate very quickly here into the devices, the device manager view within Glueware. And here in the Glueware device manager, these devices, the Cisco and Arista devices have been updated saying that the description is zero trust enabled device. So that's for TrustSec. And I will navigate over to the ServiceNow instance and navigate back into my CMDB. And I can see that that field has been synchronized. So when we talk about CMDB sync, we're saying, okay, ServiceNow has an asset inventory. This is my source of truth in terms of what is running in my network. But Glueware is actually talking to the network. So Glueware can update fields like states or serial numbers or other things that are discovered. And in this case, description, that's classifying a device as zero trust enabled. So this is just showing that synchronization has happened. Let's go back and look at the workflow. Okay, so Glueware is now in a waiting state and it's waiting to get the change request approval. So it's open the change request, it's updated the change request, and now it's waiting for approval. So let's navigate into ServiceNow, into the change records, and I can see here that the weekly NAC audit has failed. So let's navigate into this change record. So I can see here, not only has it been open, but as I mentioned, the priority has been moved to critical, the risk has moved to high, and it's assigned into the ECAB approval list, and the change is waiting for approval. So with that, on the approvers tab here, I can right click on my approver here and provide that approval. So by pr providing that approval, the Glueware workflow will continue to work through the changes. So we can navigate back into the Glueware workflow. So we see that the change request task has completed. It's now moving on into the rest of the workflow tasks. Okay, so we can see that the workflow has completed, running nine minutes and 48 seconds. If I scroll down through the task, we're looking at the task view here of uh, the workflow. So after we opened up that change request and had it approved, Glueware went through and provisioned those devices. It then updated the change request as implemented and completed out the verification as well as a final update, putting the state to review and with the closed notes as NAT config has been applied. So let's take a look at that. And if we just navigate back to change all. So we'll navigate back into this last change request that we are just working with here. And we can see that the change has been approved. It's already been in implemented and now in review state. It's been approved and the change has been implemented by Glueware. So it's in a final approval state and the approver can go in or the reviewer can go in and close it at this point. And with that, 
This concludes the highlight demo of Gluart integration with ServiceNow, both the CMDB sync, as well as the ITSM for process management and approval. Thank you for your time and interest in Glueware. For more information, visit Glueware.com. Thank you.